Hi everyone, and today I'm looking at a new lens that's very interesting for all kinds of reasons. The new Tamron SP 45mm f1.8 VC USD. It's the first lens for full frame cameras that can give you that 50mm, well almost, focal length, a very fast maximum aperture of f1.8, all together with image stabilisation. A lot of video makers, including myself, have been dreaming about getting a fast 50mm lens with image stabilisation for a very long time, and now it's finally here. Well, 45mm anyway, close enough. I'll be comparing this lens's performance to similar 50mm lenses throughout this review, as the focal lengths are so close. It rather seems like Tamron have decided to do a Sigma, and go a little more upmarket with this lens. Tamron have been making SP or Super Performance branded lenses for many years, but the lineup is now being upgraded to have a new contemporary design, better build quality, and hopefully, excellent optical performance. This comes at a cost though. The lens is £450, or about $600. That's a hefty premium to pay over, for example, the little Canon 50mm f1.8 STM, which is only $100. Let's hope the new Tamron lens can wipe the floor with a cheap little Canon in terms of image quality. Tamron have also released a 35mm version of this lens, which I've heard performs, unsurprisingly, almost as same as this 45mm version, so I'm only going to be testing the 45mm. That focal length is, of course, extremely useful for everyday photography, a classic standard focal length which can give a very out of focus background at f1.8, but also a reasonably wide background. On an APS-C camera, it's a little tighter, the equivalent of 72mm, a short telephoto view which is good for portrait work. Let's look at a build quality. The lens is definitely quite big compared to fast 50mm lenses, and it weighs nearly 600 grams, or one and a quarter pounds. Bulky. That's mostly because the body of the lens is made of metal. A nice quality touch. Tamron have also designed a nice new tapered rear body cap. Take it off, and you can see some handy weather sealing around the lens mount. The focus ring is wide and rubberized, and it turns extremely smoothly and precisely, being well damped. The mechanism gives you full-time manual focus, so you can change focus at any time. The autofocus mechanism is very nice and quiet, but a bit slow. As you can see here, it seems to take a moment for the motor to gather some momentum. However, although the motor is a bit slow, I found it to work a lot more accurately than normal for a third party lens. My copy was almost as accurate as a Canon lens, missing focus only occasionally. My copy of the lens was also rather slow to focus in live view mode. For example, here's some footage of video autofocus on a Canon 70D. It's not particularly sure of itself, and you can hear some clicking as the autofocus micro adjusts itself. Anyway, the headline feature of this lens is image stabilisation, or VC as Tamron call it. Let's see how effective it is on a full frame camera. Here's some footage with stabilisation turned off, and now on. We hear a very gentle whirring sound, barely audible, but the mechanism seems to be working very effectively. It's even well behaved as you pan and tilt the lens around. Nice. And here's how the stabilisation works on an APS-C camera. The vibration compensation seems pretty sure of itself. This is actually a very good performance, encouraging for handheld video makers. And for stills photographers, well, it enabled me to get this shot taken handheld in the moonlight on Christmas Eve. Handy. Overall, the lens is a bit bulkier than I expected, but it has very nice, solid build quality, a big step up for Tamron, and the image stabilisation is pleasingly effective for video work or normal photography. It just doesn't have the world's most confident autofocus motor. Alright, image quality. Firstly, on a 20 megapixel Canon 6D. Straight from f1.8, the lens is razor sharp in the middle of its images, and looking over into the corners, we also see excellent sharpness, with little chromatic aberration. 
Normally, 50mm lenses have serious problems in the corners of their images, so that's quite an achievement for Tamron. It's almost as sharp as the Sigma 50mm f1.4 art lens, which I have classed as being the sharpest lens I ever tested. Stop the Tamron lens down to f2.8 for an extra kick of sharpness and brightness, and maximum sharpness is reached at f5.6. Fantastic. Let's try it on a more difficult playing field of a 20 megapixel APS-C sensor on a Canon 70D. In the middle of the picture, straight from f1.8, we continue to see excellent resolution. The corners of the image are also holding out very well indeed, looking nice and sharp with some very slight magenta chromatic aberration. Stop down to f4 for truly excellent sharpness, and at f5.6 we seem to reach perfection. So it appears that Tamron are the new Sigma. A really superb technical performance from this new lens, whether you're shooting full frame or APS-C. Let's move on now and look at distortion and vignetting on a full frame camera, as they're not usually an issue on APS-C. The lens displays just a hint of barrel distortion, barely noticeable. At f1.8, we see some quite dark corners, but that vignetting is not quite as bad as usual for a fast standard prime lens. You only need to stop down to f2.8 for it to be virtually gone. Another very good performance. Let's see now about close-up image quality. The lens can focus as closely as 29cm, much closer than most normal 50mm lenses. At f1.8, the close-up picture quality is a little soft though. Stop down to f2.8 for a good improvement, and f4 for a very sharp image. Let's see now about work against bright lights. It's not a perfect performance here. We see a little broad flaring and a bit of a loss of contrast when the lens is faced with bright lights. Nothing too bad here, but also nothing impressive. For those of you who need to know about coma levels, you'll be glad to see that this Tamron lens has no significant issues. At f1.8, in the corners of your images, you can see that bright lights are just a tiny bit smudged, but stop down to f2.8 and the issue is gone. A good show here. Finally, bokeh. Generally, the outer figure's backgrounds are rendered very smoothly indeed. Even very busy backgrounds subtly melt away. When faced with extremely bright points of light, you'll catch a little bit of an onion ring effect, though. Well, I had the pleasure of testing out this new lens for a few weeks over Christmas, and it made a big impression on me. It's going to be very useful for future bits of video work I'm planning. Its optics aren't totally perfect, but it's certainly an extremely sharp lens, with excellent control of distortion, vignetting that's not too bad, nice quality bokeh, and some extremely useful image stabilization. Tamron are showing the world that they really can play in the big leagues if they want to. It could be a real professional workhorse for a lot of photographers and filmmakers, and so it comes very highly recommended.